Hi everyone! Let's improve the vertical drops shader. As I promised at the end of the corresponding video, we can achieve an entirely different effect if we convert the algorithm into polar coordinates and make a few minor adjustments. Yes, we will create exactly what you now can see on the screen, which can be used in a game as a hyperspace jump or a warp speed acceleration. Let's get to it. This time, we don't need to start from scratch because we will build on the shader I created a few weeks ago. If you haven't watched the mentioned video, I definitely recommend watching it first. Just in case, I've uploaded the source code of the Vertical Drops shader to the godotshaders.com website, so we can copy it from there and we can proceed. I included the link in this video description. So, we have a scene with a color act that has a shader material, this one, attached to it, and a shader generating uh, falling drops or a moving star field. What we see is displayed in Cartesian coordinates, which use the X and Y axis. So the top left corner has coordinates 0, 0 and the bottom right 1, 1. To achieve the effect of flying through space, we will convert this into polar coordinates, which will have the origin at the center of the screen, and each point will be determined by the distance from the center and the angle with the x-axis. I discussed polar coordinates in detail in one of my previous videos, the link to which I've also included in the description of this video, so I definitely recommend watching it. I will now perform this coordinate transformation directly in the code. As I said, we will have the origin of the coordinates in the center, so we'll start with that. And since the raindrops will no longer be falling downwards, we can remove the minus sign in front of the UV. Let's do it. And let's move the origin to the center. Uh, so sorry, sorry, I just subtract subtract 0.5. <clears throat> Did I do that? No. Sorry, now it's correct. As we can see, the direction has reversed, but otherwise, shifting the origin to the coordinates of the coordinates doesn't have a big impact on the overall effect. However, it's important as we will soon see. Now, let's move on to the conversion to polar coordinates. We'll start with the distance of the pixel from the center. So right here, float dist for distance, as distance is just a built-in function, so we cannot use the same name, length uv, distance from the, uh, from the origin, from the center. So that was easy. And what about the angle? We'll calculate it using the ATAN function, which is the inverse of the tangent or the arc tangent. Float angle is ATAN of UV X and UV Y. Now we can put both together and observe the result. So the UV vector would be changed to vector 2, angle and dist. Okay, we've achieved something, but the only thing we can be satisfied with is that we truly have the origin uh, of the coordinates at the center of the screen. Everything else looks a bit odd, so we need to improve our code. I'll start by adjusting the distribution of the stars by dividing the angle by the value of pi, like this, divided by pi. There, that's a bit better right away. But how do we achieve the original shape of the raindrops and reverse the direction? Very easily. We simply use the inverse of the distance. So instead of this, I'll use one divided by this. Now it's correct, 
and I think we should change some parameters to make it look a bit better so uh, maybe the density increase and the compression and the trial size perhaps yeah that could be an increase of speed of course this is not like a warp speed okay that's better however it would be good to get rid of that cluster of stars in the center as it's just flickering too much and getting in the way a trick will help us with this a modified version of which we tried in the tutorial of the shockwave effect will create a black circle with blurred edges which we'll use to multiply the final color and to make this properly easier to adjust we'll add two uniform parameters we need to specify the uh, size of the circle and the edge which would be blurred a little bit so let's do it uniform float center size with a range and initial value 0 0.5 no 0 0.6 and the range would be from 0 to 1 with 0 0.01 as the step and the second one would be the edge so uniform float center edge with another hint range and the initial value 0.4 and again from 0 to 1 and 0 0.01 now we'll calculate the circle using the smooth step function let's do it uh, let's do it where right here so float circle would be smooth step of center size minus center edge second parameter is center size and the third one is simply length uh, sorry length of uv again the distance from the center you may remember that we used the very same formula in the shockwave shader video where we defined a ring to uh, simulate the shockwave effect okay and finally we'll apply the circle in the last line of the fragment function so color by drop and multiplied by circle wait for it that's it i could use a bit more speed i guess so we'll extend the range for the speed parameter right now it is from 0 to 1 which is probably not sufficient let's try from 0 to 10 and now i can go right here this is a really a really something like a high animation speed or high uh, warp speed okay uh, using a gd script we could for instance implement uh, let's just slow it down a little uh, we could implement gradual acceleration simulating our spaceship jumping into the hyperspace like the initial phase and of course if we want a perfect circle instead of an ellipse we can add the usual aspect ratio adjustment that would be uh, of course first we need to define the resolution so uniform vec2 resolution would be vector 2 and our dimensions are 600 by 400 and to use it in the code which is simple uvx is multiplied uh, sorry multiplied by resolution x divided by resolution y wait for it yeah now we have a circle and we can accelerate to jump to hyperspeed like this and that's it thanks for watching I'd say this kind of effect could be used in many space games where you occasionally need to fly through a wormhole, switch to warp speed or jump through some kind of time tunnel and so on. We could implement this effect in multiplayers, giving each one a different color or end the flight with a big flash into bright white. There are many possibilities and everyone can choose their own. 
If I ever write a second part of my book on shaders, I try to dive into it a bit more. In any case, take care, I wish you lots of success with your projects, minimal bugs, and see you in the next video.